To complete 100% of Forager, I'm going to have to complete over 100 achievements, become an expert fighter, a raving lunatic controlling a deadly droid army, and become rich beyond my wildest dreams. And so our little marshmallow adventure begins, spawning in on a small grassy island filled with resources and nothing but a pickaxe. So I began collecting stone. Once I had collected enough, I placed down our very first furnace, but the furnace was useless without coal, so we used some of the wood we had collected to craft some. While waiting for the furnace to craft the coal, I carried on collecting resources. This also gained us XP, but with all that hard work I had run out of energy, so I ate some citrus and berries that I had managed to forage. I then set about crafting two iron ingots, and it wasn't long before I had hit level 2. And with that, I was presented with our first choice to make. Industry, economy, foraging, or magic. I decided to go for economy, which instantly granted me 40 coins. This expanded my skill tree with further choices. Unlocking storage and trade. Using the coins I had just gained, I decided to buy some land and was presented with these four pillars. After playing around, putting these down in different sequences, I eventually managed the correct combination, granting me a large chest. But there was a catch, I needed a key to open it. I was then greeted with our first enemy, a slime, which I easily took care of. I was once again hungry, so I went in search of more berries. On the eve of day one, I found a fairy to which I collected, and by doing so I gained 10 XP and my energy bar was once again replenished. I then took care of another slime and once again leveled up. This time I chose magic, granting me 25% more XP. Placing down a forge, I finally worked out how I could get hold of a key. It required 4 iron ingots and 2 gold ingots. I then placed 6 iron ingots on to craft at the furnace, and placed down another furnace to speed up our production. The fishnets I had placed down earlier had finally caught something, but my excitement was soon ruined when I only found out it caught sand. I then leveled up once more, this time hitting level 4. With the required materials I was now able to craft the key. I decided to use my next skill point to unlock industries. This unlocked steel and glass. With the key now crafted I was able to finally unlock the chest and inside was a top hat which meant that coins were now worth 50% more. Very nice indeed. At what we could build next it was a sewing station but I first needed two fibre and four bricks so I crafted the bricks at a furnace and it wasn't long before I had what was needed so I placed it down next to our forge. My fish trap had once again caught something, this time we caught a fish. Not wanting to waste the fish I cooked it at the furnace. Once cooked I ate the fish and this gave me 20 energy and one health. While trying to keep up on the amount of coal we needed I once again leveled up. This time unlocking foraging, this meant that cotton spawned more often and allowed me to find wheat and beets. I then placed down another fish trap hoping to increase our yield. I then used all the gold ingots I had managed to craft to make coins, not knowing how many coins would drop for each ingot. It turns out it drops 12 coins per bar. With my newfound wealth I decided to buy two more pieces of land, one for 50 gold coins and another for 60. I then built a bridge over to the island with the little rainbow and took care of this strange looking thing with udders on its head which dropped meat and hide. I then placed down another fish trap. These got increasingly more expensive the more you crafted. Returning to the Rainbow Island I was unable to work out exactly what these little glowing mushrooms were for. I once again leveled up gaining another skill point, this time I chose to unlock sewing which unlocked leather and meant that the sewing machine worked 25% faster. Looking to craft some leather I realised that I needed thread so I used some of the fibre I had to craft some. With a key now made I opened the chest on the island we had bought earlier, this time unlocking a lantern which provided better visibility in the dark. Day 4 and I had once again leveled up so I unlocked the skill storage which granted me the use of vaults. I then bought another piece of land to the south which contained a building and also gained an achievement for owning 5 lands. With inventory space being a problem I looked into crafting a vault but it required 3 steel and 10 brick so this would have to wait for now. I then also used another skill point to unlock trade. This allowed me to craft markets. These required 40 wood, 20 bricks and 5 leather. I now had the required materials for the vault. 
This allowed me to store 6 items inside and then when collected would instantly go to the vaults rather than my inventory. I then crafted my first upgrade, a small backpack. This increased my inventory space by 4 slots. It wouldn't be another successful day without a new skill being unlocked. This time I unlocked craftsmanship. This unlocked royal steel and royal clothing. I checked the recent unlock of royal steel, but it required a lot of resources, so I realised this was something for further into the game. While clearing the path to the building on the island I unlocked earlier, I gained the achievement gemologist for having one of each gem in my inventory. My excitement to see what was inside the building was soon ruined when I found out it was a museum, of which they wanted me to provide items. So I left somewhat disappointed and I then spent the rest of the day collecting resources. In need of sand I decided to craft a shovel, this cost 20 iron ingots and 20 wood. While waiting for my shovel I placed a few items on to craft at the furnaces. Eventually my shovel was ready and I took it for a spin and dug up a bunch of sand. While digging for sand, it dawned on me that each mushroom was a different colour of the rainbow. So I hit each mushroom in colour order, and with that, I was once again presented with a big chest. So I crafted another key and opened it, this time receiving a set of nerdy glasses, which increased my XP gain by 20%. I then used another skill point to unlock combat, unlocking swords and increasing my base damage by 1. I had managed to grow a nice stockpile of gold coins so I purchased another island for 320 coins. But all that was on the island was a foraging obelisk which was a bit of a disappointment. With another skill point available I decided to unlock smelting. This meant furnaces and forges worked 25% faster. Coal was becoming quite a problem at this point, so I placed all the wood that I had on the furnace. I then set about collecting bottled torch bugs. This would enable me to upgrade my pickaxe to a slime pickaxe. My slime pickaxe had now finished crafting. I then looked at what the next upgrade would be. This was the golden pickaxe. With another skill point available, this time I decided to unlock banking. These required 10 gold, 1 steel and 20 bricks, so I set about crafting the required bricks. And it wasn't long before I was able to place down my very first bank. These produce coins slowly over time. I then placed down another furnace to keep up with the ever growing demand. And at the end of day 9 I had levelled up once more, so this time I decided to unlock carpentry. This meant that structures cost 25% less wood. I now had enough coins to purchase another island. This one contained an empty fountain, so that was a bit of a waste. After killing another slime I then earned the achievement Jealous for having 100 jellies in my inventory. Placing down a market I then looked at what was available. Although this time it had nothing of value, the market restocked every 10 minutes. On the evening of day 10, I realised that there was someone now in the fountain. After some talking, she gave me a quest to give her 1000 coins. I was not ready to part with that kind of cash, so she would have to wait for now. Instead, I decided to use my spare coins to unlock two more islands, this time unlocking our first desert biome and another grass biome. The grass biome contained four beets who got rather upset when I started attacking them, although I still couldn't shake the urge to kill them. I was also unable to work out what this item was on the other island that I had just purchased. Although I felt like a monster, I still couldn't shake the urge to kill the beets, earning myself an achievement in the process. Later that day I also earned the achievement Hoarder for having 1000 items in my inventory. I then used another skill point to unlock masonry. This meant that structures cost 25% less stone and brick. The next morning, I unlocked myself a slime bow, although this is something that I rarely used. After placing down a carpentry table, I realized that it was all decorative items. So this was the first and last time it was used.
with the unlock of the new biome meant we also had new enemies spawning. This time a zappy robot which drops steel when killed. I then purchased another island containing what looked like a treehouse. On day 13 I unlocked the skill machinery. This meant all structures had a 10% chance of crafting double which was nice. I then had a visit from a travelling salesman, but the free items he had available was out of my price range so I left him for now hoping he would return later. At the treehouse there was a druid, who complained that the natural resources are being exploited by little jerks with pickaxes. I believed he was talking about me, but I couldn't be sure. He then requested two bottled torch bugs which I just so happened to have for which he rewarded me with magic scrolls, gaining the achievement druid helper in the process. After explaining that he believed that the exploitation was still going on, he then requested 30 tree saplings, something I was still unable to produce. Using another skill point, this time I unlocked drilling. This gave a 25% chance of finding coal when digging. I had also managed to upgrade my slime pickaxe to a golden one. And then by mistake, I managed to use a druid scroll spawning tons of trees. What a donut. But in all the tree glory, I had managed to craft myself a slime sword. I then purchased another island, this time someone who was on it looked like a jester. So I built myself a bridge and made my way over. It turned out this was the creator of the game who wanted me to play a quiz mini game. I am curious to know how will you know Forger by now. Let's play a trivia manga mini game. If you get at least one answer correct, I'll give you a super rare reward. But of course there was a catch you was not able to answer a single question correctly. He then insulted my trivia abilities and offered me a consolation prize. And I also earned the achievement Jester. Inside my prize, I received a spirit orb. Which allowed me to level up health, energy, damage or XP. I chose to increase my damage by one point. I then leveled up once more, this time unlocking farming. Placing down a windmill, I now learned how I was able to craft tree saplings. On day 16 I spent most of the day collecting materials, while having to briefly go afk due to someone being at my door I was attacked by a slime causing me to endure my first death in the game. This is also the point where I realised that I had managed to loop my audio track over my microphone so if you've got this far into the video please leave a comment calling me a plonker. And not. Oh. Ooh. Right. There is a secret where flowers don't live, okay. So I got to work digging up all the sand on the island, earning an achievement for digging up 50 items in the process. Aha! We did it. After digging at every spot, I managed to find the secret, another chest, this one containing a fish net which made fish traps collect themselves. With space once more becoming an issue, I placed down another vault. Yeah! This time I used the druid scroll to place down palm trees, allowing me to collect citrus fruit. I was then able to use the citrus I collected to make tree saplings, something the druid had asked me for a few days ago. I then handed in the tree saplings to the druid and gained another chest in the process. Hello friend. I have a final quest for you. It involves finding a rare dinosaur egg. Oh no. If I can get this egg, I will be able to raise and protect creatures.
creatures. Inside the chest was a lunar medallion which meant that star falls happened more often. I had now earned another two skill points so I decided to unlock mining and alchemy. I then placed down a cauldron but looking at the recipes we wasn't quite ready for this yet. I then also placed down a flower press. Right, so now I can flower press. Ah, I can make some crystals. Using flour and sand, I was then able to make crystals. Ooh. At first, I was unable to work out exactly what I needed to do. It's got like a little hole. I'll shoot it. Ah. I then received another spirit orb. This time I decided to use it to level up. Okay. Geology, all rocks drop coal. Oh my God. Yep. And just like that, our coal problem was no more. I had also managed to upgrade my wallet, meaning that coins were now worth 25% more. Using another skill point, I then unlocked textiles. This allowed us to craft boots and gloves. While also checking the markets, I found some miner's scrolls and decided to buy them. Right, what does a miner's scroll do then? Holy Jesus. But it turned out that my trusty pickaxe was not quite strong enough yet, and that meant that it took ages to mine certain rocks. With enough coins saved up, I decided to purchase another island. Lovely to meet you, friend. My name is Anna Banana. <laughs> it's hard being a princess in the desert. Yeah, I bet the hair, man. No flowers grow here. I'm flowerless princess. She wants 40 flowers. So not wanting to let Anna the Banana down, I set about collecting the flowers. Typically, I had just used them all in the flower press. My slime gloves had now finished crafting. I then looked at what was needed for the golden gloves and then set about crafting a pair of slime boots. I then purchased another island for 2,280 coins, but, but tried working out this obelisk. Eventually I realized that the sword had a moon on it. So I returned once it was dark and this time I was able to gain my reward. Yeah. Yes. Oh, skeleton mask. Basic skeletons don't attack you anymore. Okay. I then unlocked the skill prospecting. This meant that rocks have a 10% chance of dropping gems. I had managed to upgrade my wallet. This meant that coins were now worth 50% more. I had also finally got round to paying the fairy queen the thousand coins she requested about 50 years ago. She then gifted me a fairy aura that meant I now regenerate health and energy passively, but I'll be honest, I never noticed this. Eventually, I'd managed to round up 40 flowers, so I returned to Anna Banana and presented her with the flowers, earning the achievement Princess Helper and some of Anna's delight. She then had another quest for me. She requested that I bring her two royal clothing, although I didn't have this, so this would have to wait for now. Purchasing another island, I noticed an old man in the middle. So I headed over to see what he wanted. After talking to him for a while, he requested a golden egg, and let me tell you, this was a pain in the keister to get. Running low on resources, it was time once again to put my pickaxe to work. I had also managed to upgrade my backpack once again, gaining another four inventory slots. Using another skill point, I unlocked automation. This meant that items collected themselves, which was a nice perk. Trying to gain a golden egg, I purchased some animal feed and gave it to the chicken, but no bueno. While taking care of some skeletons, I heard a strange noise and a bang, so I went off in search of what it was. Ah, look. 
Wicked. I then use my pickaxe to break the shooting star, gaining some star fragments in the process. I then returned to Anna with the two raw clothing and received a chest but was unable to open it due to having no key. But my luck was in as the markets had just restocked and one of the items was six keys so I purchased them and returned to the chest. Inside was a pink bar that meant animals dropped 25% more resources and spawn much more often. Ooh. Our new fox friend told me that he needed all the poop I could possibly find. Turns out, he wasn't joking. Apparently, it was even a life or death situation. 500 poop. Away from the poop saga, I was then able to upgrade our shovel. This meant that digging would irrigate the dirt. Inside the druid's treehouse, there was a wardrobe where you could change your outfit. Eventually, I settled on the new look. The Lunatic Cultist. Lunatic Cultist. I then decided to craft some animal feed and used it on a cow and some poop popped out. Doubling my poop investment. I was then able to upgrade another item, this time the sword. This meant that the sword had an increased attack damage of 2. Markets had once again reset, this time containing 100 flowers. This was perfect as I needed more for the animal feed. I also purchased 4 bombs. As there was an achievement for using 3 bombs at once, that's exactly what I did, trying to clear some of the ores. Oh shit. No, 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 no. <gasps> oh. Using another skill point, this time we decided to unlock fishing. I tried once more for the golden egg, but once again I was left disappointed. I was then able to buy another island, this contained another NPC. Talking to the goblin, he explained that the skeletons were becoming a problem and tasked me with a quest to bring him 100 bones. Money was starting to pick up so I purchased another island and on the island there was two piles of bones and when using my pickaxe I received said bones. This was great as we had just been given the quest by the goblin. But as we finished mining the bones, a large skeleton appeared out of the pile, catching me off guard, but it didn't take too long to take care of him, receiving a spirit orb for my troubles. So I repeated the process for the other pile. I then used the two spirit orbs I received to increase my damage. I then earned the achievement mint for crafting 2000 coins. After taking care of the skeleton, I now had enough bones, so I returned to the goblin and handed him in. I then received another treasure chest and inside was a school key. This opens all chests for free. Typical, as I'd only just recently bought six keys. Wanting to increase the amount of things I could buy, I placed down another market and in the process earned the achievement for building 20 structures. And with another skill point, this meant another skill point being unlocked, this time inscriptions. I then placed down an inscription table to check it out, but I was unable to craft anything as of yet. Build a scroll, boost the efficiency of nearby structures. Ooh. Intrigued by the building, I immediately made my way over, and once inside, I realised it was my first dungeon, the ancient tomb. Once inside, I started to pull this blue electric block up towards the blue lever. Once I got it close to the lever, it lowered the bricks that were blocking the next room. Once through to the next room, I took care of the blue zappy things and two doors opened. I then decided to head to the left side, but was unable to get anywhere on that side. So I tried the right hand side instead. This side contained two zappies on a rail, but these were easy to avoid. I then made my way up to the room above. Nice. Returning to the room below, as the zappies went round, they lowered the bricks that were blocking the next area. I then realised it was much easier to whack the blocks rather than pull them. This time pushing it into place lowered another two blocks. I spent a while trying to figure out how to get through the next bit but couldn't work it out. So I took out my frustration on the two zappies. I then pushed the electric block all the way through to the left side of the dungeon placing it on the next lever, lowering another two bricks. 
The next room contained another zappy, but I kind of cornballed it by shooting arrows at it from outside the room. Working my way through, I then took care of another three more. These were a bit easier as they didn't shoot you. Ooh, thunder rod. Use it to zap enemies and, the, and to power structures. I then found another electric block and pushed it all the way through to the right hand side, this time being able to work out how to get through. I then used the thunder rod to lower the bricks and obtain the key the other side. I then returned back to the start to open this door and take on the thunder element, but once again cheesed the boss by using the thunder rod outside the room. This took a while, but eventually got it. There we go. Complete the ancient tomb. Tomb Raider. Award only to those who beat the ancient tomb. Once back outside, I enjoyed my new toy zapping everything in sight. This made things a hell of a lot easier. After all that hard work in the dungeon, I had managed to earn myself another skill point, this time unlocking Formaturgy. Yes! I was also able to complete this island that I unlocked about 30 days ago by zapping the obelisk looking thing. I then started to craft as much animal feed as possible. I also managed to upgrade my ball once more, but now I had the thunder rod, it was even more useless. And I also managed to unlock the fishing rod. But fishing turned out to be about as boring as watching paint dry. Wow. Using the animal feed I gave it to a cow, and a lot of poop plopped out. Earning the achievement for having 100 poop, a little way off the 500 I needed for the fox. I then went on another thunder rod rampage, collecting as many resources as I possibly could. I also started to plant as many flower seeds as I possibly could, I needed to increase my animal feed production. I then unlocked the skill Faith, which unlocked shrines. These turned out to be pretty powerful. Our friend the travelling salesman had once again returned. Spirit orb, I'll take that. That's... Using the spirit orb I had just bought, I chose to increase my damage. I now had 4,000 coins, so I was able to buy another island. Once inside, I was presented with a load of electric cubes and a battery, and I won't lie, I was unable to work this out, so I used trusty Google, which turned out you had to electrify a certain amount of batteries using the cubes. Once complete, it rewarded us with one big chest and four small. I also earned the achievement for Ancient Astronomer. And it just so turns out that the clue to the puzzle was on the outside of the building all along. The novel had still not worn off yet with the thunder rod. Collecting materials was now so much more fun. I once more purchased another island, but I was unable to work out what I needed to do to the four pillars, so I left it for now. As one of the achievements were for building onto every water tile, I began to slowly fill them in when buying new islands. Still needing a ridiculous amount of poop, I kept planting more flower seeds. I then bottled a fairy and crafted our first sage scroll before using it to gain a little bit more XP. While planting even more flower seeds, I gained the achievement for watering 100 seeds and also planting 100 seeds. Wanting to increase my gold income more, I placed down a further two banks and unlocked the skill Regency, meaning that potions and scrolls cost fewer resources. We were still short of the amount of poop we needed for Mr. Fox, so I carried on planting as many seeds as I possibly could. I then used another minor scroll, and thankfully my thunder rod made lighter work of destroying the ores. I then sold a few items and purchased my first droid, and let me tell you, these were ridiculous in the late game. <laughs> I got a Snorlax! I used a wizard scroll to turn all the nearby trees into animals in search of more poop. Whee I was also able to buy another further two islands, this time unlocking the fire biome. I see you have found my tower. You know I am going to make go fetch some items, alright? Don't resist, I have a special reward for you. I'm talking about my super special magic scepter. Okay. We still needed more poop and a golden egg, so I once again crafted as much animal feed as I possibly could. I then purchased another island, but was unable to work out the riddle. Story of my life. Only the flower that glows in the dark will awaken the stone princess. On day 43, I made my way into the fire galaxy and spent ages trying to get the rods to either sit down or up, but once again I resorted to Google for the answer, and I would have never got it in a million years. 
So thanks to the power of Google, I earned the achievement Galaxy Puzzle and also gained another heart. I had once again now leveled up, so I unlocked the skull jewellery. This unlocked amulets and meant that gems now sold for 25% more. Looking for more star fragments, I set about crafting a star scroll at the inscription table. My land! Woo Whoa. Hey, Connor, <laughs> I thought I'd, thought I'd actually done it, but no. This time I actually managed to complete the puzzle, earning another achievement. But hey, there we go. Unlocking a shield that gave me a 25% chance of dodging attacks, but I was unable to work out how to open the smaller chests. With the required star fragments, we now only needed steel and brick to craft myself a shrine. So I put some bricks on to craft at the furnace as well as crafting a golden amulet that meant we gained 50% more resources. I then stupidly wasted a wizard scroll as there was nothing to turn into animals. A mouldy book. XP and get, oh, how did I not see that? Now that I had the required steel and brick, I was able to craft the shrine. The shrines gave you two random boons each time they were used. This time I chose dexterous. This meant that we moved twice as fast. I then placed down a further two volts as once again we had run out of inventory space and crafted ourselves the mouldy book, something I wish I'd had spotted sooner as leveling up was becoming harder. I had also managed to place down another shrine increasing our possibilities but ended up with the same choices as before, typical. With the mouldy book now crafted I looked at what was the next upgrade which only required me to get 30 glass so that was easy. So I placed down two more furnaces to speed up production. After taking care of the demons, I now had enough cinder bloom to give to the wizard. Cinder bloom, this is great. I need a few more things before I can give you a super special magic scepter. While talking to the wizard, once more my slime buck had now finished. The wizard had also requested that I give him five star fragments. I then decided to kill all the animals for their hide and meat. Once again, I then went on a rod rampage looking for Nightshade. <laughs> Destroy a hundred gravestones. I then earned another achievement by mistake. Oh, kill a magical deer. I didn't realise you could actually kill them. I just thought they were impossible. With another skill point available, I decided to unlock quarries. I then went to the top of my island and placed one down to see what would happen. And it turns out it was just basically a minus scroll. Oh wow. <laughs> Yee. -hee. By 45%. Only one more fetch quest for you. Oh what? Turns out he wanted 10 void steel, and I'd yet to make any myself. So my little wizard friend was gonna be waiting a while. I then used the sage scroll he had given me to gain another level this time unlocking transmutation. This would allow me to craft void steel. I then placed down another shrine, this time choosing the boon industries, making all structures work twice as fast. And I then purchased another island for 5,700 coins. When I stepped foot on the island, I was attacked by a trap, losing free health in the process. But I can't complain as I gained four spirit orbs. I chose to use two of them to increase my damage and the other two to instantly level up, gaining me two more skill points. I then unlocked manufacturing and summoning. E. Dig always yields sand, dig area increased. Using the animal feed, I set about collecting as much poop as possible. This was dirty business. I then placed down another market, increasing our possibilities of good items each reset. Once again, I bought another island, this one containing three bells and a sign. The sign looked to contain three notes, low, medium and high, so I copied the notes to the bells. There we go. I then placed down our very first factory. This allowed us to make fiberglass, plastic and electronics, although I was a little bit early on this. Using another skill point, I unlocked supply. This meant that the markets would sell more items and restock 50% faster. I then placed down a spirit forge. Okay, great school. Ah, 
Oh my god! Yeah! Returning back to the statue with the riddle, I realised that it was talking about a cinder bloom. So I handed one in and boom. Finally. That took way too long to work out. And overall. I then unlocked the skill laser. This meant that my droids would now deal double the damage, which was wicked. Could actually have more. Ah, 50 poop, yeah. And with that, I now had all the poop I needed. You saved a life today, son. <laughs> Be proud of yourself and be proud of your poop. I mean, it took me ages to get that poop. It's red and bad for your teeth. A brick. <laughs> it's not wrong. Here, yeah, this one's on me. <laughs> he gave me a brick. Levels were now coming in thick and fast, this time unlocking the skill Spellbind. Now being able to craft great schools, I was able to upgrade my sword and bow to the school version. Fucking throw water on these. Oh my god, I've only just worked that out. I then set about crafting our first set of electronics. These were time consuming. I then purchased another island that contained a chest. After opening the chest, I earned the achievement Treasure Hunter and also gained another spirit orb. While checking the markets, I'd come across another droid, so we quickly purchased it. I then went in search of a bottled torch bug, as it was about time we upgraded our pickaxe once more. As I was now running low on resources, I went on another run around the island, smashing everything with a thunder rod. I then crafted as much leather as I could, and made sure to keep my food well stocked up. We was also now making steady pace, buying up all the islands, unlocking a further two. One of the new islands I had unlocked required you to place one of each gem in the pillars matching the shape on each pillar. My shrines had once again reset, this time I was able to choose the boon, Colonist, meaning that lands cost 50% less when active. So I purchased as many as I could while it was up. After getting sidetracked I returned to the pillars and placed in the final gems, unlocking another large chest, receiving a holy relic, this did damage to nearby skeletons and demons. I now had the required steel to upgrade my pickaxe once again. I had now gained a further two levels, so I decided to unlock physics and conjuration. Desperate to gain a golden egg, I drank a liquid look and used 25 animal feed, but was still unable to get this damn egg. The items, instant game random magical scrolls, gain double XP, All right. So I once again resorted to using a druid scroll and then a wizard scroll spawning tons of animals. I then placed down a power plant next to my factories as this made nearby structures work faster. And on day 59 I spent a solid 5 minutes just going back and forward collecting the eggs from the chickens until... Oh my god I just want this. Aha! Finally! And after all that it turns out the old man wasn't even that impressed with the egg. What a joke. Surprisingly underwhelming. <laughs> It won't hatch into a lovely bird's friend. And I can't even eat it. Those are the only purposes of an egg. Help the old man, yeah. What's he giving? Oh. Bowls don't consume arrows, nice. I then managed to gain another colonist boom at the shrine and got to work purchasing land. Combat Ugliest, gain XP from slain enemies on the other. I was then faced with another riddle, and let's be frank, I am not the smartest fella in the room, so these took a while to work out. Alive with, without breath, cold as death, never first I always drinking. Fish. What force and strength cannot get through it? With my teeth, can I can do it. Fall from great heights and live, but submerged in water, I die. And this was paper. I had also made the mistake of placing a cooked fish, so replaced it with a fresh one. We heat. Nice. Solve the school galaxy puzzle. Once back outside, the golden gloves had now finished up crafting. Increasing my attack speed by 20%. 
While digging, I received an achievement for digging up an archaeology item. I made sure to keep upgrading the books whenever I was able to, so that I could get as much of an XP boost as possible. I then entered the school maze. My droids were pretty much taking care of any of the enemies at this point. Oh, I found a hidden room. Eventually, after what felt like a lifetime, we found a chest in the middle of a room, and it turns out this chest you sacrifice one life at a time for a random boon. Max permanently increased max damage by one. Bunch of food. We'll check a lot of food. Oh shit, I've been losing max health. Oh no. <laughs> I didn't even realise. Uh... But me being me, I didn't pay attention to the health I was losing. I now had to finish the rest of the maze with only one health bar. I decided to drink a potion that set off explosions around me. This doubled up as a handy hidden room detector. Yeah. What was that? Necrorod, use it to summon skeletons. Carrying on further, we eventually managed to find a large chest, completing the school maze. Complete the school maze, we're here. Ward only those who beat the school maze. Oh, thank goodness. After gaining three levels from one of the boons, I now had another three skill points, so I decided to unlock optics, architecture, and destruction. I then purchased another island, and it had another sacrifice chest on it. Stupidly, I decided to click on it, so I was now back down to one health, gaining an achievement in the process. Oh, no, I can't come off it. Uh-oh. Why did... No! Oh. After our death to the demon, I decided to take on the fire temple, but had to be extra careful as I still only had one health bar. While making our way through, we had to avoid these bombs while making our way to the door above. I then took care of the demons and made my way through to the right hand side door, finding a blue key in the process. With the blue key, I was able to unlock the blue door, which then led me to the red key. And behind the red door was the green key. Behind the green door was a chest containing a fire rod. Fire staff. Use it to blast objects and enemies. Nice. Using the fire rod, I was able to light these pillars, completing a mini puzzle. Oh, it's the final boss key. I then faced off against the great demon, but once again, I just cheesed the door so that I didn't have to take any damage. In the process, I earned the achievement Daredevil for dodging a lethal attack. I got lucky there. And completing the dungeon without taking any damage. Complete the fire temple. Using another shrine, I was able to once again gain the colonist boom, purchasing another three islands in the process. Close to being able to afford another, I emptied my banks before the boon runs out. On one of the islands, there was a frozen chest. We was able to melt this using the fire rod. I then unlocked another skill, meaning that crafted items sell for 25% more. Purchase land is, oh my God, no. Using another sage scroll, I leveled up once more, this time unlocking colonization. It was now time to take on the crystal cave. Each passageway was blocked by ice, rotating the gems directed the light source that then melted the ice. But while writing this script, I've just realized I could have just used the fire rod. I then took a little ride on this rail car. Once I had killed the ice ghost, I then found another small chest containing some coins and a few gems. I then pushed this cart through to the next area, but it was blocked so it ended up coming back. After adjusting the gems once again, I was now able to melt the ice blocking the route through. This time, the rail cart had managed to make it all the way through. Mahi. 
Ice Rod, use it to freeze objects and enemies. Using the Ice Rod, I then froze this fire that sent off light in all directions, melting the frozen key. Right, let's have this boy. This boss turned out to be by far the easiest one of them all. In the process, I earned the achievement for dodging 10 attacks. Complete the Crystal Cave. At the start of day 65, I come across another puzzle, which turned out to be binary. I am not a computer, so I once again used Google for this puzzle. There we go. I had to cheat that one a little bit. Earning the achievement Frozen Astronomer and the Frozen Galaxy Seal. A few items now required all, so it was time to place down an offshore drill. Golden shovel? Oh no! Bosh! With our health now regained, we once again visit the chest, gaining another three levels and a droid. I now have more skill points and chose to unlock looting, gluttony, railroads and bargains. I then had another visit from a travelling salesman and purchased five toxic sigils for 6,000 coins. Using one of the toxic sigils we spawned in a boss but I hardly damaged him and ended up dying. I then had to die four more times so the boss would despawn. Whoa. <laughs> Once again I carried on filling in the spaces over the water tiles. Are you a soldier? Not really, I'm a marshmallow. Challenge me and my brother to a fight. And if you win I will give you a Rare treasure. Bring me ten bones you are, when you are ready. So it begins. Prepare to be destroyed. Turned out they weren't that hard after all. What was that? Vampire wings. 30% chance to recover health when killing enemies. Nice. On one of the islands, I then mined a giant crystal and gained another achievement. Mine the giant crystal. I then managed to upgrade my boots and pickaxe once more. 3.5% DAC damage burn on resources. Using another shrine, I chose the excavator boom and got to work digging up the fire biome in search of a dino egg. Yes, finally I've got the dino egg. I then returned to the druid and finally handed in the dino egg, something he had asked for about 30,000 years ago. I had now managed to complete 49 out of the 103 feats. With another colonist boom, I was able to purchase another four islands. Using the ice rod, I was able to put out the fire on these chests, gaining a bunch of gems in the process. I was then abused by an old man. Please leave me alone. All right, you make my face hurt with panic. Wow. <laughs> I should give you a quest, but that's exactly what the developer wants and I can't let them win again. Anyway, since I'm better than you, Go fetch me a few materials for you in my factory, please. Wow. While collecting materials, I managed to find an NPC that was hiding, gaining another feat. Oh, I didn't even see that guy. I then continued to fill in the water tiles, which was rather time consuming. With the final island purchased, I gained another feat. I then spent the whole of day 69 trying to find missing tiles. This was much harder than it looked. I must have done about 30 laps around the map. And after what felt like an eternity searching for the final piece. Oh, finally. <laughs> the next puzzle meant that I had to walk around the island and note down the numbers on the floor. 
This was the sequence in which we put down the rods, the mystery of the random numbers was solved. With the raw steel now crafted, I handed it into the construction worker. This is complicated work, so you probably don't understand it, but factories need steel to make cool things. Whereas, here is your reward. Help. I then placed down another spirit forge, closer to the factory so that it would produce the items quicker. There was a feat for using a bottled rainbow, so that's exactly what we did. Looking for more chances to find rares in the market, I placed down another three. Using another skill point, I unlocked gambling. This unlocks slot machines. I placed one down and ended up spinning the slots until I hit the jackpot. I made sure to keep placing down new banks when I had the required resources. As there was an achievement for gaining 1 million coins using the bank, I then once again managed to upgrade my boots. I then took another spin on the slot machines. This was an easy way of getting resources for very little cost. I had once again another visit from the traveller, this time purchasing 5 star fragments and 3 legendary gems. And at the end of day 73, we upgraded our boots once again. On day 74, I purchased another droid, and cleared all the resources around the island once more. I then upgraded my gloves, increasing my attack speed by 30%, and sacrificed another health for the Hermetic's boon, gaining a bunch of potions, although I was hoping for the droid boon. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Just destroyed my mark. I then upgraded our backpack once again, increasing our storage by another four slots. Oh, the ghost. Woohoo! Yes. Did I scare you? I'm trying to get better at scaring people. We failed miserably, kiddo. I think I may need help. Perhaps you can help me. Yay, thanks. I am totally going to look terrifying now. Here, keep this old treasure as a reward for your troubles. We get. Oh. Cheers. <laughs> Don't worry, my friend, it's just me. I bet you were terrified. Oh, so scared. I can think I can be even more scarier. Oh, no! I again used the slot machines once more to gain a few items including dino eggs, an anchor, and a skeleton fish. I then unlocked the skill Calciverous, allowing us to eat gems, and well because there was a feat for eating a gem, that's exactly what we did. I then upgraded my boots once more, giving us a speed increase of 50% and a 25% chance of dodging attacks. Void portal, fiberglass, and I've just, oh, just used my fiberglass. With my glass now made, I then crafted a void portal and placed it down. Feet all enemies before the time runs out. While inside the void portal, I decided to use my bow as there was an achievement for killing an enemy with a single shot. Reach void level five. With level 5 now complete, I gained a chest full of goodies. Oh my god, there's two of them. Now it's getting serious. Ah! At level 9, the Thunderboss joined the party, and I managed to die, making it a personal best. Once back outside, I was able to upgrade the gloves once more, increasing the attack speed by 40%. With money no longer being needed for islands, I made sure to purchase any items from the markets that would come in handy, and once again, I was back on the slot machines. Bosh, let's upgrade Cosmic Steel, should I say. You made it, congratulations. 
You have earned my super special magic scepter. Huh. I could just have gotten those things myself, to be honest. <laughs> this scepter is far more valuable than any other. The magic scepter that I just received meant that a thunder rod never ran out of charge. This was a game changer. Collecting resources was now easier than ever. I then purchased a school sigil from the markets and placed it down hoping we didn't have the same results as last time. Although he was still hard, at least this time I managed to do some sort of damage. And I still managed to die twice in the process. Died 10 times. <laughs> yeah, hey! After killing the boss, he dropped four spirit orbs, so I used two to increase my health and another two to increase my damage. I then spent all of day 81 digging for treasure, but pretty much came up trumps apart from finding some sphinx. And on day 82, I upgraded my first structure to nuclear, earning the achievement Mad Scientist. Electronics and void steel were still incredibly slow to craft. While checking the markets, I spotted a slime sigil and then placed it down. The slime boss was much easier than the skeleton and once again dropped four spirit orbs. Angry slime! Ah! Oh. He's way easier. I then decided to try my luck once more against the toxic guardian and this time I was able to take care of him. There we go. Defeat the Toxic Guardian. I then upgraded the Necro Rod to the Death Rod. This meant the stronger skeleton spawned when used. I also unlocked the skills Pet and Auto Repair. This meant that we only had four more skills to go. Is that why I've managed to get that thing? <laughs> Using another excavator boon, we were now able to finally find a Kapala skull. Six to be exact, so I returned to our friendly ghost. There you go. Wahahaha. <laughs> Tis perfect. Not freaking scarier than me now. Except taxes. <laughs> I then unlocked another two achievements, Diligent for completing every NPC quest and Artifact Collector. With another two skill points available, we unlocked Invasion and Cooking. With the Kapala Skulls we dug up earlier, I was able to upgrade our wallet once more. Coins were now worth 75% more. I then used the chest once again to gain another droid. This way was way easier than making them. I was then able to finally unlock our first crystal upgrade. And with another level, we had now reached level 65 and unlocked our final skill, Renewal, gaining the achievement Skillful. I then decided to return to the school maze to light all the torches, earning an achievement. I had now managed to complete 71 out of the 103 feats. Yes. Right. On day 87 I returned to the void once more, this time easily making it through level 9 and gaining the achievement Void Explorer. This might be the one that I die on. Ah, no, 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 no. And at level 14 there was another boss joining the party, the Ice Wizard. My excitement was short lived when I ran out of time on day 14. Ah. I then unlocked the crystal bar and crafted another nuclear machinery. I then upgraded the blizzard rod boom, and my wallet, meaning that coins were now worth 125% more. I then also gained an achievement for having 100k coins. Next up on the upgrade list was the shovel. This meant that digging always yielded rare items. 
I spent the whole of day 90 looking for secret rooms. I had managed to miss three. One in the ancient tomb, another in the fire temple, and the final one in the crystal cave. Ah, oh, there we go, I got it. We only had one sigil left to defeat, the Dark Beat. We managed to find one in the marketplace, and boy, he was not a happy chappy. Once defeated, we earned the achievement, not a monster. We then started the process of completing the museum bundles. The first one we completed was the mining bundle, earning the achievement Master Miner and a Spirit Orb. We then completed the trapping bundle, the archaeology bundle, the foraging bundle, and the building bundle. This left only the cooking and alchemy bundles left to complete. I then placed down a further three factories and purchased another droid. I was now constantly using the chest to try and find the termination boon as we needed a few more droids. I then returned to the museum and completed the alchemy bundle and checked out the remaining items needed for the final bundle. Ice cream, kebabs, which I've just seen I think. I was then able to upgrade the sword to the demon sword and then gained our first void item, the void boots, increasing movement speed by 60% and once again I was able to upgrade our backpack adding a further 4 inventory slots. With the items now required for the cooking bundle, I returned to the museum and finished off the final one. Corona, you completed all the bundles. This is magnificent. Wear this as a badge of honor. Wait, hey. After talking to the curator of the museum, I earned a further three achievements. Treasure master for opening every big chest, the curator for completing the museum, and the seal collector. Do, do, do. Get a cosmic gear item. Boom. We then once more decided to return to the void, making our way to level 14 with ease. We managed to complete level 14 with 1 minute 25 left, a drastic improvement to last time. And on level 19 another boss joined the party, the fire demon. These were pretty annoying simply because of the amount of mobs they spawned but we was easily able to complete level 19 and earn the achievement Void Champion for reaching level 20. And then on level 21, we once again ran out of time. Ah, oh, we've run out by one. <laughs> oh no. Needing more damage if I was going to reach Void level 30, I returned to the chest, managing to get another four droids on the bounce. Four health well spent. I then upgraded my sword once more, giving me the chance to shoot fireballs when attacking. I then went on another material collecting rampage for the fun of it. The thunder rod novelty had still not worn off. What you got buddy? Oh yes. I was then able to upgrade my wallet. This time it now meant that coins were worth 150% more. Obtain nuclear gear item. Wee I'd also managed to upgrade my amulet. Turns out I also had the resources to instantly upgrade it once again, this time to the Void Amulet, meaning I gained 150% more resources. We was now making steady progress and had managed to achieve 92 out of the 103 feats. I then placed down a further 2 banks and 2 markets. I was also now buying as many boss sigils as I could so that I could use the spirit orbs to increase my damage. I also had only one more rod to upgrade but I needed lava eels. With my fishnets coming up short, I resorted to spinning the wheel at the slots and eventually managed to bag three more, but we still needed a further five. On day 99, it was once again time to try and reach void level 30 once again. The lower levels were now a cakewalk and I just walked around guiding my droids who did all the work. Easily reaching level 21 where I managed to finish with one minute 38 left on the clock. And at level 24, the slime king showed up. But these were easy to kill, so they just ended up stacking up on top of each other. I then managed to make it to level 29, only one more level to go. But this time the skeleton kings joined the party. These were pretty hard to kill, so hard in fact that I ran out of time with 100 mobs still left alive. Dang. That was crazy. Searching for lava reels once more, I tried the slot machines again, but this time came up trumps. So I decided to place down a lighthouse next to my fish traps, hoping to increase my luck. And then I even tried the most boring thing possible, fishing, but no such luck. 
I was now constantly checking the ridiculous amount of markets I had every time they restocked for droids and sigils. I then placed down even more fish traps as I had yet to find any more eels, earning the achievement for building 200 structures in the process. Feeling impatient I once more resorted to the slots and I eventually managed to win big and with that I was now finally able to upgrade the fire rod. Hey. <laughs> wow. 13 sigils. After killing all the sigils, I now had 52 spirit orbs, which I used to increase my damage. 154 attack damage. On day 104, I upgraded my boar once again to the demon boar and void boar. And with nuclear rods becoming easier to craft, I was now able to upgrade my sword to the final version. Feeling like we couldn't fail this time, we returned to the void once again. But before heading in deeper, I used a necro rod to spawn a ton of skeletons and then killed them using my sword, collecting a load of uranium and toxic sludge. I also did my least favourite thing, fishing, as I needed to obtain 30 Kraken's eyes. Once we had got what we needed, we headed further into the void, easily reaching level 29. This time easily completing it and earning the achievement Void Master. At level 31, I then fished for some more Kraken's eyes while letting my timer run out. Back on the surface, I managed to upgrade my gloves to nuclear, meaning that my attack speed was now increased by 80%. I was also on a mission to craft as much cosmic steel as possible, but needed more legendary gems. On day 106, I managed to upgrade my wallet to nuclear. This meant that coins were now worth 200% more, and my bow to cosmic, although I never used this anymore, but needed it for the achievement. I also now set the factory to build an infinite amount of nuclear machinery, as I needed 100 of them Day 107 was pretty big for upgrades. We managed to upgrade the Codex, Amulet, Bow, and Pickaxe. The next day, we also managed to finish the upgrades to the Amulet and crafted the Obliterator. I now had 98 out of 103 feats, leaving two achievements for being a billionaire and a trillionaire, and also the achievement for having 100 nuclear structures and earning 1 million coins from banks. Realizing the trillion coins was not going to be easy, I turned to YouTube and found a guide it showed you that placing down as many lighthouses as possible and an island in the middle using the necro rod, I then spawned a ridiculous amount of skeletons and killed them collecting the bones and great skulls. Easily earning the achievement billionaire from just the dropped coins. I then repeat the process of collecting skull and bones and selling them at the markets for about the next 30 minutes. Wiki. Have one trillion coins. Achieve every other feat. I make a million coins using banks. I want a hundred nuclear structures at once. Needing more uranium and toxic sludge, we once again returned to the void and used the necro rod spawning in as many skeletons as possible. I then started placing down a lot of forges as these were the cheapest to craft and then upgrading them to nuclear. Eventually earning the achievement nuclear master. With only one achievement left, I got to work destroying everything so that I could build as many banks as possible for the 1 million coins needed. I left my PC overnight for the next 8 hours, eventually earning the achievement Coin Collector. And with that, I had now completed 100% of Forager. If you liked this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment what game you would like to see me play next. Thank you for watching and see you next time.